this is Paul Markham. Welcome to the World Beyond Belief and our ongoing interview series. Today we have a very, very special guest. We've been fans of this woman for years and years. Every time we see her, every time we hear an interview or read something she's done, it blows our mind. I love her stuff because she has an amazing grasp of the total picture of what's happening. And that you'll hear reflected in everything she says today. Also, she's focusing on a critically, critically important topic, which is, of course, the medical system. We try to expose that week after week on World Beyond Belief. Today, we'll talk to her about her new book and the many ways she sees to begin to right the many problems that are happening in the world. This is... Janice Barcello on The World Beyond Belief. Hi, Janice. Welcome to World Beyond Belief. It's great to have you here. We've been a fan for years. I'm so happy to be here. Great. <laughs> you just, uh, you're just returning from the Free Your Mind conference up in Philadelphia. I would imagine it's still in Philadelphia. Yep. Uh, tell us about that. And oh, my when... God. It was, it was outstanding. That's all that I can say. The amount of um, love and wow. aware, aware people, uh, it was ex an extraordinary gathering of souls. And um, I learned so much. I felt so much. I mean, people were sharing such deep stories with me about their own birth trauma, because that's what I was talking about right. at the conference. And there was so uh, much heartfelt emotion you know, uh, being expressed, I, I can't, I can't express, I can't even, like, articulate how deep of an experience this was for me, and I think probably for most of the people that were there, it was really, really beautiful, and I encourage everybody to go, they're going to do it every year, anybody that's awake should really be participating in this conference, just to meet each other and connect, you know, uh, my work was very well received. My book was sold out before I even talked. <laughs> wow, <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's great. <I> know. <laughs> it was just extraordinary. Really, really, really great. Yeah. Well, we were up there when the first one started. And yeah. I, I called Mark and we talked about it. I didn't end up presenting. He started, got it off the ground. And this is like the third or the fourth year. Yeah. And some of the amazing people that were there, I mean, everybody is working really hard to stop what's going on in the planet. So yeah. there's got to be a lot yeah. of good souls there. there. There were so many good souls, and you could feel, you could feel the love, you know, and just so much support, and <laughs> I don't know, it's wow. hard for me to, was, I came away from it feeling high, literally, like, uh, um, like I had just been reborn uh, into the arms of love, you know. Great. My first birth was not like that, <laughs> so this, this was really a rebirth for me. It was very, very wonderful. <laughs> well, you, wonderful. You, you kind of are radiating that. I can see yeah. you're really radiating, big smile. Yeah, that's a... You can feel it, yeah. It's like, a, it's like a Free Your Mind conference hangover or something. You've got. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. There, were there other people there of note that you saw their presentation and thought it was really, really worth seeing? Yeah. So what would your hope? Uh, I, for me, uh, Lennon Honor, uh, Mark Devlin, Freeman Fly, um, I feel like they're, oh, Clint Richardson. Uh, right. These were, these were the ones that I really, uh, I didn't get to see a whole lot of them because I was uh, trying to sell my book and sure. people People were wanting to talk with me, and uh, there was just so much going on, so I really didn't get to attend a lot of them. But the ones that I did go to, of those, the those four stand out uh, for me. Lennon, uh, Lennon is talking so much about parenting. You know, I really resonated with uh, what he was sharing about conscious parenting and healthy relationships and the work that he's doing uh, to support men. Uh, I have tremendous respect, you know, for him. Uh, I don't know, I just, 
I can't say enough good things, you know. That's about wonderful. Everything that I witnessed, just amazing. And I'm really glad that you had a good reception on your book, because that's got to be, that's got to be a, a really pivotal piece in springing all the information on the, the satanic, satanic nature of the medical profession. You know, it's interesting because when my book was first uh, released in paperback, I made an announcement on Facebook. And people in my Facebook community, it seems that they came up from the underworld. They had been hiding out there, waiting right. for the announcement to attack the book. Um, the book the book does reveal uh, a lot about circumcision and particularly the Jewish influence in the United States that has um, brought this hideous uh, practice to America. Um, and I think based on previous posts of my revealing uh, th their influence in pornography and um, the sexualization of children, they really wanted to stop people from reading this book. And so within 24 hours of my announcement, they sent uh, emails to everybody in the birth community to tell them what an anti-Semite I was, how the book is filled, you know, how the book is all about trying to undermine Jewish people, which is total nonsense. Um, and then they even went to Amazon to say bad things, you know, about me on Amazon, right. about the book that they hadn't read yet. Um, so what I found was the people in the birth community dropping out, right? Oh. And now all these people in the consciousness movement, all these people who are aware of mind control and hope are moving up um, into my Facebook community and into the, uh, the uh, embrace of my book. So it, there's been a shedding that's happened. The people that are right. not ready to know the truth, uh, We'll, we'll let them go, and then the people who are really ready to understand uh, the critical situation we're in right now with respect to how we're bringing children into onto the this world. Planet. Yeah, um, the people that are ready. That's great. Ready. Well, they're, they, they're really open to the satanic nature of the control system. So yes. just this aspect, I mean, I would imagine circumcision is the first step in uh, trauma-based mind control. It is, uh, all of the things that they're doing to infants in hospitals are trauma-based mind control. But to me, circumcision is the worst. It's the most, uh, the most vicious, uh, despicable attack on a helpless infant. Uh, and the nature of it is to destroy human love. You know, the foreskin is, uh, is designed so that when it meets with the vaginal wall, it triggers the male brain to release uh, chemicals of love and bonding. And they're cutting that off. You know, they're preventing that mm -hmm. man, that little boy who's going to become a man from experiencing uh, the depth of human love that is his birthright. And also, it interferes then with his partner. If he can't, if he can't feel what the Creator has given him to feel, then his partner suffers, and his children suffer, and sure. our entire civilization suffers. And so, uh, it's, a, it's a satanic attack on, on what brings us closest to God, and that is human love. Right, the connection is gone. I wouldn't say it's gone, I, I think it's severely undermined in the removal of the full skin. Right, I think, I think so too. When did that become a part of modern medicine? Like in the 1800s? You know, do you know? Well, um, in the early 1900s, we have the Rockefeller takeover Absolutely. of American medicine. And we know that that's a Rothschild uh, Zionist agenda. Absolutely. And um, it's at that time, around the turn of the century there, that we begin to see a lot of Jewish um, people uh, who had they become doctors, coming out, uh, writing articles, taking over the American Medical Association, creating the American Medical Association, and pumping out all these articles about how circumcision cures masturbation, how it cures paralysis, how it cures, uh, you know, cancer of the cervix, of the penis, 
that smegma causes uh, cancer, all kinds of total, total crap. Right. I mean, unbelievable crap. And I have, I have outlined this in my book so that uh -huh. people can see just how despicable, you know, despicable and disgusting these people are in the, the amount of lies that they spewed out in the name of medicine uh, in order to normalize this procedure. When in reality, here's what I think is going on, okay? The Jews have been kicked out of over 100 countries worldwide. And they are identified by the fact that they are circumcised. Right. Okay, so I have, I have an excerpt in my book from one Jewish person. You know, circumcision identifies us as Jews. We can never let that happen again. Everybody should be circumcised. Okay, so they're trying to hide in plain sight, basically, by circumcising everybody um, so that they themselves can't be identified um, as Jews. Because we know it's going to happen again. Everywhere everywhere they go, uh, mm -hmm. we see a degradation in, in sexuality on an enormous scale and the theft of wealth uh, from the country. So there's a breakdown, you know, over and over again of countries where the Jews are embraced and welcomed, um, then everything turns to mush. Oh, wow. Uh, and this has happened repeatedly, which is why they've been kicked out, you know. And I, there's innocent Jews, of course. I think there's really a very small group of people, uh, I say the word people very loosely, there's a small group who are responsible for this evil, but all the Jewish people get lumped in, right. you see, and they all get blamed, and they all get shuffled out from one place to another, um, and now with what Israel is doing, uh, I mean, obviously it's going to happen again. There's going to be several more uh, exoduses, I think, or massive, uh, they're going to be kicked out. That's what I think is going to happen in the United States in the not too distant future, because the Americans are beginning to wake up see what they're doing. Exactly. I, I, I like to, I know uh, Jews that are pretty great people. I think there's a, there's a group called the Synagogue of Satan. Yeah. Which is, well, that's a, it's satanic. It's a satanic group. It and sure these is. are the, the devil worshiping uh, disguised as Jews. I mean, I, I really think that that's true. Uh, there's Probably something in the blood or the bloodline that makes them a little bit more success, susceptible to that. But yeah, that's yeah. an interesting topic. You know, somebody's banging at the door. Can you go give ahead, me one sure. second? I'm so sure. sorry. No problem. Oh, just to fill in now, I think that there is a small group, and probably not too small anymore, because according to Jay Parker, there's 34 million Satanists practicing. Could be a pretty big group. Anyway, I was, I was filling in a little bit while you went to the door. They are Luciferians. It's no question about it. Uh, you know, it takes a satanic mind to say, okay, here's this beautiful penis that God created, um, and we're going to mutilate it, and we're going to make it better. Right. Like, better than what God created, because if the foreskin's there, you might get HIV. HIV being one of the biggest hoaxes, right. you know, ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I know. It's a satanic suggestion. Right, I know. When I was a child, the, uh, the mythology was that it was not cleanly. Like, if you were uncircumcised, it couldn't be kept clean. And uh, so that was part of the mythology that actually got my mother to. I just think it was routine, though, back then. It was routine uh, in the sense that uh, people are so mind controlled that they don't ask questions. Yeah, you want to take my infant? Put up a piece of this. Go ahead. Penis? Cut off any. Take them. Go right ahead. Um, you know, and even if they don't ask them, sometimes they don't even ask the parents. They just take the kid and do it uh, without <laughs> without even asking permission. But the fact is, now they ask for permission, and mothers are like, "Yep." Go ahead. Take if my you're... baby. Go ahead, strap him to a torture board and, uh, you know, cut off the most sensitive part of his penis right. without anesthetic. Go ahead. He huh. just got born. Right. That's because we've, we've given the doctors kind of an authority that supersedes common sense. 
And now they're the third leading cause of death. Doctors are in the U.S. Um, I, Gary No, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he I know Gary No. Uh, the statistic that um, they are responsible. They're the largest killer right. in the U.S. Yeah, they're responsible for murdering. I can't tell you how many people in this country. Um, in addition to torturing them, <laughs> right. you know, making everybody sick, they're literally killing people. Well, um, so this is a, an evil cult. We're talking, medicine is a Luciferian cult, um, at least the way it's presenting itself right now. And the people behind it are Luciferians. These are satanic worshipping, uh, vile people there's, that there's... don't have a right, they don't have a right to live as far as I'm concerned, based on what the, they've done to this planet and to all living creatures, not just us. They have wreaked havoc on all living things. And that's what Luciferians do. You see, because they're worshipping an entity that is uh, in competition with the Creator, in a battle with the Creator, right. they, they take great delight in destroying what the Creator has brought forth, especially us. Right. And this is their pride and joy, being able to, to totally destroy uh, all that is pristine and good and be. Right. Yeah. It's, it's horrible to ride the planet with them right now, especially right now, because now what they're doing seems to be coming more and more to the front. Thanks to people like you exposing this medical atrocity that's happening. Yeah. It is an atrocity. I mean, even though my talk was well received at the conference, I can't tell you how, how much emotions um, it brought up for people. You know, the last the last person I talked to there, um, he was telling me when I put the slide up of an episiotomy, and for your viewers who don't know what it, what it is, that's when they cut open the woman's. Uh, the woman's perineum, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're uh, being sexually violent and genitally mutilating that mother in order to make uh, the head come out faster. So they surgically slice her open. Um, and when I showed that slide, this father was remembering the sound of them doing that oh. to his wife. And he was, he was crying. I mean, he, about at least 10 men came up to me crying um, yeah. because of what they witnessed and because of what they've been through uh, in this system. So I don't want people to make the mistake if I'm talking about birth trauma is just for women because, no, it's not. This is affecting men on huge scale, and it's affecting families and, of course, babies. So... Uh, it's affecting all of us in a very, very deep way. And we, we must talk about it, as painful as it is, because we have to begin the healing process. Right. We have to stop going to the doc we have to stop going to the hospital to have babies. Yeah. What would you advise hey, go ahead. Well for your audience, for your listeners, um, if people stepped outside of the culture for a minute, okay, and you look at a hospital you see that hospitals are places of disease. They're places of uh, extreme toxicity, right? They're places of extreme trauma and death. People are sick. Right. People are dying. People have severe illnesses. People come in all, you know, cut up and traumatized and mutilated from car accidents. I mean, it's a horribly traumatic environment filled with poisons, all right? What? Are we thinking that walking into this kind of an environment is a good thing to do, a good place to bring a child into the world? I mean, think about that. That is totally an indication of how mind-controlled we are, that we actually think that that's a safe place to give birth to our children. Nothing could be further from the truth. Right? In the United States, we have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world, and it's worse for infants in the United States. Sixty-seven wow. other countries are more likely to have their children live past day one 
All right, if uh, you're born in the United States, that baby is, has a good chance of dying because of American hospitals. Right. All right, and the same thing with women. With women, it's only 59 other countries, okay? But still, the United States is way up there in terms of, like, killing women and babies during birth. That's, that's totally amazing. And especially because the Luciferian reversal is, oh yes, well women used to die in droves before all this technology came in, which is complete right. Women have been giving birth for centuries without the interference of techno technology, okay? Or this satanic medical system. Uh, and we weren't perishing, or otherwise we would not be here in such large numbers. Obviously, we were able to do it just like every other animal can do it. Right. And they, but they wouldn't get the benefit of all those vaccines if they had the child at home. The great benefit of vaccines so that they can all die from all the right. immune diseases and every other disease that comes along with these zero-toxic vaccines. Now, this is a Luciferian assault. And we are dumb enough to walk into their turf, right, to have our babies initiated into the Luciferian order. That's basically what's going on. And something we need to look at. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a horrible that's a that's a horrible thing to realize, but it's not hard to see it. It's not hard to see once, it. Once once somebody like me comes and, and points it out. Right. You know, and I'm so I'm so grounded I'm so grounded in knowing it's true. People can feel that. And once you feel it from me, you know it's the truth. You know, well, you can sense it. Right. Yeah, the exercise of stepping back and looking at it, you know, not as of course you go to the hospital to have a baby, but why would you go to the hospital to have a baby? It's a lot it's why? a why? Right. Well, you get seduced by the doctor, you know, the doctor, the medical profession, and then your peer group, you know, you got the other mothers have their babies there, and, and they say, you know, what if something goes wrong and you're having the baby at home? How would you answer that? I would say if you go to the hospital, you better believe something's going to go wrong. Right. Because they are experts, experts at creating a crisis. If you want to have a safe and gentle birth. The most important thing you can do is heal your own birth trauma, number one, and give birth to your baby in an environment where you feel safe. Ideally where it's your home. Right. All right, because that's your turn. And you can birth your baby on your time, in your way. You can eat as much as you want. You can do whatever you want if you're at home, you know? In the hospital, they're going to do as much as they can to make it interfere, uh, interfere with birth, even though they don't tell you that. What about the episiotomy thing that you were talking about? Women don't need that to have babies? Oh my God, no. Oh my God, no. See, once they cut a woman like that, the chances of her full uh, perineum ripping apart is very, very great. So she can have a massive uh, tearing. When women give birth, it's, I mean, they can tear, you know, when the baby's head comes out. The perineum can tear. But because it's a natural tear, it'll heal very rapidly. I'm not undermining that it's painful um, and that it happens, but it'll heal very rapidly. When you get a straight cut like that, okay, the body is, that's just not, there's nothing natural about that. And it, it opens women to all kinds of infections, to all kinds of sexual problems, urinary problems uh, later. There is never, ever a reason to do that. The reason they're doing that is because they're in a hurry. They don't want to. They don't want to take the time to let that baby navigate the birth portal, you know, in its own way, and have the mother helping the baby get born by getting into positions, you know, to. No, they don't want that. They want the mother on her back, you know, legs up in the air. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. And then they cut her. It's sexual violence. It's just like everything they do is violent. Circumcision is violent. C-sections are violent. These people are, are scissor-happy maniacs. They're insane. They are insane what they're doing. 
and we are insane for letting them. Right. We were, uh, I was in a hospital in February. I had to go because I was in so much pain. That's the only reason I would go to a hospital. I couldn't believe how everything was centered around efficiency. I mean, cleaning the room, serving the food. The food was horrible. I would have starved to death on that food. It was, I mean, I think, uh, do you know Daniel Smith, who uh, is um, standing trial for selling MMS in Washington yeah. State? Amazing. He, the reason he got involved in the health, uh, alternative health community is because his mother starved to death in the hospital. So it's, it's just a place of death. It's amazing that's exactly that anybody, what it is. anybody gets out alive. That's why we know it's, that's why we know it's a Luciferian cult. It's more than just a place of death. It's really a place of attempting to trap the souls. You know, I don't know if you, um, have heard my work with Dr. Paul Byrne. He's a 80 year old, uh, neonatologist blowing the whistle on organ donation. I and heard so you. What they do. Right. Did you hear that? I've heard your stuff so on organ donation, but I, I really like you to repeat it because it's totally blows my mind. What they're doing in the U.S. in any event is um, they can only harvest organs from living people. So nobody is dead when they become an organ donor. All right. They created a fictitious diagnosis called brain death. Right. Uh, which is not death because people are very much alive. And um, they, they create that diagnosis so that they can basically kill people taking their organs. What they do uh, is that they paralyze people, put them on paralysis drugs so that they can't move, then they trick the family and say, the, you know, this person's never going to come out of the coma, will never get well, can you sign the forms, we'll take their organs. Right? And then they bring them to the operating room on paralysis drugs, leave them open, take out their organs one by one, with their heart being the last. Of course, after the heart is out, they're dead. And they do it without anesthetic. So they're torturing people to death. All right? Some people have their penises cut off. They just did a penis transplant surgery where uh, the guy lost his penis because of a circumcision. Somebody else was stupid enough to be an organ donor, had his penis taken from him before they killed him. And that penis was put on the person who lost his through circumcision. Uh, so this is the kind of insanity that's happening. And I want to stress that there's something called soul lift, which is when a person dies, if the person dies quickly, their soul automatically leaves the body and goes to source. Okay? But if they can slow the process down and traumatize that person severely, keep that person in a constant state of terror, stress, extreme pain, they can lift the soul wow. and try and try to offer it to their gods or to keep that soul trapped in this matrix so that even after death, that soul will be in the matrix and will reincarnate, not by choice. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a lot of what's going on right now is that people are trapped. I had heard that some people are referring to this period of time as the harvest. Yeah. And it's the harvest for, that's why there's so many people on the earth. It's because it's harvest time. And perhaps these Luciferians, through techniques like hospitalization, are doing things like harvesting souls. Do you, that's exactly right. Are, do you envision entities uh, being in the hospital? It seems to me that's where they'd be. Uh, um, That's you know, uh, there's definitely entities. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, I think there's actually a, a race, a breed. They call themselves Jews. I don't think that they're human. I don't think they're part of organic creation. I think they're Lucifer's babies. 
In right. other words, they're not they're not created in love. They don't have the energy of love the way real mankind does because they're uh, from a different creator. So it's not necessarily off world, although it might be. Right. Okay. But it's definitely from another creator. And these are the ones that we have got to figure out what to do about. You know, I've heard somebody say, we were willing to come and interact with these entities and even uh, have sexual relations with them and make children with them as a way of uh, mutating their DNA so that they could become part of organic creation. We have the, have some of the coding for love. You know, like we're trying to help them right. by, by blending with them. I'm not sure we've been terribly successful. <laughs> I, I didn't know we were that, I didn't know we were that much of nice guys. I didn't think we were that nice. <laughs> we are so, uh, such a loving, uh, race. Uh, the way the creator, uh, has created us. Uh, of course, that's been altered because of all the trauma. Um, and because we are giving birth to children in uh, the image of Lucifer instead of the image of the Creator exactly. uh, through the trauma. So uh, it's hard for people to even connect with the love that's, at, that's you know part of their inherent birthright. But the way the Creator made us, it's, we are extraordinarily loving beings. I mean, just looking at a flower can make the flower happy. You know, every animal, exactly. every living thing benefits from our love, from our attention, from our loving gaze. All, all of life just lights up as a result of our loving presence, you know? And this is something we should begin to take responsibility for. Or um, start waking up to. Because we've yeah. been we've been blamed for everything that's on the planet, the wars and the the pollution, and we're blamed for all that stuff. But none of that's our problem. It's all none of that is from us. None of it's from us. It's from these Luciferian overlords. That's exactly right. Um, I, I, it is to say that there are also people uh, from organic creation who have been so traumatized that they dissociate, they're gone. Right. And an alter personality has stepped in. And these are the ones that are signing up for the military, becoming cops, you know, right. shooting dogs and all I mean, just the most despicable, disgusting, inhumane uh activity. I don't know what to say, except that if these people were not traumatized, they probably would not be doing what they're doing. Well, you've got uh, trauma-based mind control from the beginning. Uh, the first, I don't, when do they do circumcision? They do it right away, don't they? In, well, in it hospitals? depends. It, there are stories, like I read one story that the baby was coming out breech, feet first, and the blood came, the doctor sniffed him, cut him, before the, his head was even out. This is like, this is decades ago. All right, some of these guys wanted to get their hands on the babies before the babies had a minute with their mother. You know, they wanted to torture the baby right, right away. They produced all kinds of uh, medical articles about the benefits of doing it right away. Um, so now it usually happens within 24 hours after birth. Uh, there's, there's many other things that that infant has gone through, usually before the circumcision. The circumcision is uh, like a final insult before the baby leaves the hospital. And they're going to do everything they can to cut that baby before the baby leaves. No. So if, a, if a mother has time to think about it, you know. <laughs> right, right. But when you're in a situation like that, you really, you really need to pre-plan because things present themselves. So... They put the they put the baby through several traumas even before they strapped them to a board. I saw on your website pictures of that. That's I mean it looks like something out of a concentration camp. Strapping him to a board and then cutting him. 
It's, it's horrible. I can't help but jump on the uh, analogy of the concentration camp. Go ahead. This is also another area where we have been completely lied to and manipulated about what happened to the to the Jews in Germany. Um, John Kaminsky, who writes extensively on this topic, made a comment the other day, and he said, we've been told that six million Jews died in the concentration camps in Germany, when in truth, 12 million Germans were killed by the Jews. Right. Like, wow, there's a big uh, changeover. Well, you, you, the, uh, holo the Holocaust. Go ahead. The Holocaust is the only historical event you can't research. You can be jailed for researching the Holocaust. You can be jailed for even speaking about truth. Right. Okay. More and more people are doing it, so I think the jails will be overflowing with people. <laughs> right. If they keep trying to jail people, but. Uh, yeah, we've been lied to. Uh, obviously, there's been a tremendous amount of torture um, coming out of what's known as the Holocaust. Many, many scientists were brought here, evil scientists, were brought to the United States to become part of the mind control, uh, MK Ultra, and Monarch mind control programs here in the U.S. So these are the same people that are responsible for what's happening in hospitals to babies. Um, sure. Yeah. Evil is running uh, the government completely. Absolutely. And the hospitals, of course. Every institution at this point. Right. We have to turn our back on this system. We really have to... Uh, my opinion is the whole technological world and all of its institutions, this is a Luciferian matrix. All of the technology. If you look at every other species, they live in nature. They live in harmony. With nature. Um, they don't, you know, build structures with artificial items. They might build structures like nests out of natural materials, right? But they don't do what we do. They don't take artificial things and put all of this toxic stuff all over everything that's pure and good. The technological world does this. If you come in with your bulldozers, you pick down, you mow down the mango trees, put up a parking lot, you know, you poison everything, cover the earth with your poison, pour it into the oceans, you know, dump it in the soil, spray it in the atmosphere, um, and you put people in artificial boxes so that they're separate the natural world, so that they're separated from God's creation, God's order. And that's what we're in, born into it, through hospital. And that's why we believe it's okay that the government's telling us we need to pay them money to live on the earth. Right, amazing. We were born here. We were born into the matrix. You see, we were born, we were initiated into the Luciferian order through technological birth. And that is part of the mind control that makes us think that this is legitimate and normal. It is not. It's nothing normal about the way that we live. And nothing beneficial. When we know, you know, pristine humans have the capacity to bilocate. Literally, you can have a thought and your body, you can move your body to another location. What are we doing with cars? What right. are we doing traveling airplanes and going to security at airports? When they're x-raying x -raying us, and what are we doing? But we have so lost it that we don't even, like we can't even regulate our body temperature anymore because we're always in an artificial environment. Exactly. Every other species, you know, can survive the cold because they can regulate their body temperature. But something has happened to us, and we've lost it. And that's, that is because of the technological book, you see? Right, and it seems so, to be getting more and more, the box is getting more and more tightened around us. It is, it is. The desperation is becoming very apparent because more and more people are seeking to make their way back to their pristine origins, you know? 
So back to being on the land, so back to not being on the land, you know, um, growing food and uh, being being part of the natural order again. So that's terrifying for them, sure. They're losing control uh, very rapidly now. And that's why they're trying to, you know, pull out all the stuff to try to keep it from happening. But they're not going to win. There's no way. There's too much awareness, you know. I think so, too. I think yeah. so, too. I, for the last couple of months, we've been actually doing a lot of programs on the Hampstead child molesting case. Are you familiar with that? Um, a few. I have heard about it. But you refresh my memory. Uh, there were two young children, one eight and one nine, a girl and a boy, yeah. who uh, just came forward. Yeah. So, it, so it seems like that is everywhere you turn now. And I'm thinking that they really must be turning up the, uh, the, the volume or whatever it would be on these satanic rituals to get more and more power to make this final thrust to shut the lid. What do you think about that idea? Um, I have no doubt that they're doing their satanic rituals and that they are acting from a place of desperation. Also arrogance. Arrogance. Many of them are very arrogant, thinking that they're going to be able to uh, conquer God's creations. But they have seriously underestimated God and us. Right. Um, so they're, they're going to be in for, you know, they're, they're in for a grand awakening too. Uh, the people, I mean, there's still many people watching TV, giving, giving their bodies to the medical system, you know, and those people are the ones who are likely to get trapped right. by these entities. The rest of us, uh, there's just no way, you know. They can't succeed because we're a growing number. Right. And it, I always remind myself that it's a spiritual battle. Although yes. it's taking place on the physical plane, and all we can see are the physical manifestations. It's really a spiritual battle, and in a spiritual battle of good against evil, I'll take good every day. You bet. Yeah, so I'm... <laughs> I'm right there with you. It feels so much better. <laughs> it really does. It really does. And I think your answer to get people out of the, out of the mindset that we're naturally builders of cities, and uh, I mean, that's, that's really not us. It's really not us. No, it's really not. <laughs> but you really have to step back a long way to do it. You really have to, you know, what are we, what are we about? And it's tough because we're all traumatized. Have you read the Ringing Cedars books? Uh, no, but Mindy has, and she's right across the room. She read it's them. very... Yes, she, she loved very them. Very important. She loved them. It's very important to read those books so that people have an idea of the capacities of a pristine human. You know, what we're capable of, uh, how beautiful life is outside of the technocratic order, how, you know, magical and magnificent life is outside of this technological world, and the absurdity of the technological world. I mean, just the fact that, you know, Decades ago, centuries ago, we could go outside in our own space and pick an apple or pick a mango or wherever you, you know, depending on where you live, and have the food right there, fresh off the tree. And now we have to go to a store, right? That that produce has been shipped from God knows where. That's right. Has been off the tree for how many days? Grown by who? We don't know who grows it what their energy is, what kind of energy has gone into the creation of that food. And we have to give them money to buy the food. And we have to work to make that money, to go to the store, to give them money to buy food that comes from God knows where that has no nutritional value at all anymore because it's been off the tree for so long. This is cuckoo. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. There's nothing natural about this. And there's nothing beneficial about it, except for the people who, have, who are running the money. The Luciferians. 
Uh, our control system. Yes. Right. We found that if you grow food in close proximity to you, it seems to be more beneficial. It tastes better, and it seems to have more more healthful benefits. Mindy has even started. She's the gardener in the family. She's even started to put seeds in her mouth for a yeah. while and then plant them. Maybe that's in the Anastasia books. It is. Is it? But she started it doing is. that. It's, 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 it's an amazing, the difference, eating food that's grown close to you than food you buy in a store. Well, there's a, a huge difference in food that you grow for your family with love and food that's grown for money. Exactly. Because that, that, that food has no uh, relationship to the people that are eating it. Whereas the food that you grow for your family has information about you and your family and, and wants to provide for you and your family the nutrition that you need. So especially when you put the seeds under your tongue yeah. and you walk on the earth with your bare feet, you know, you're communicating through your saliva and the toxins coming out of your feet everything that's going on in your body, you see, so that the food that grows knows what you need. Because you talk to the earth and you talk right. to the sea, basically, um, and say, here's what's going on with me, and, you know, please help. And, it, and, and nature will respond because there's such an intelligence with all of this. So the Ringing Cedars books are absolutely must-read for people that want to uh, have a beneficial future <laughs> and to help make the earth, you know, help heal the earth. Right. I had heard that actually in Russia, which is where these Anastasia books originated, that uh, the Russian government's allocating certain pieces of property to, to go into this this, uh, yeah. this this pilot, I guess it would be a pilot program now, or or experiment. Anybody, anybody in Russia that's willing to go and start a homestead in this particular area, they can have the land for at no cost, in perpetuity, so they can pass it on to their children. And this is part of the vision in the Ringing Cedars book, so it's coming to fruition. Um, they've banned GM foods. One part of Russia has banned pornography. Uh, that just came out today. So Russia is uh, coming out in front of the rest of the world in terms of uh, returning to a moral, um, pristine order, you know, closer to God. So we be, all eyes are going to be looking to Russia, in my opinion, for the future. Oh, I think that's, I think that's really true. It's funny, though, we look at Putin as a, as a hero, uh, as a figure, but how does he, uh, I wonder how he interacts with the Luciferian control system over here. I was just wondering what you think of Putin and, and how he's interacting with the rest of the world. You know, based on what I've seen, I have a lot of respect for Putin because he doesn't want to engage with these idiots. Basically, that's what I've seen. You know, he, right. he calls them idiots. He calls them idiots. He refuses to, uh, you know, be like an aggressive Israeli, you know, moral, right. um, grunting, you know, let's, uh, let's go play war, you know. Right. Um, he's not, he has much more uh, composure, intelligence, and uh, I think vision than any leader we've seen in the Western world in decades. You know, John Kennedy was probably the last one that we've had in the United States that had any vision right. or integrity. Yeah. They the rest of them are totally right. crap. Total crap. They taught him a, they taught Kennedy a lesson. Well, I'm, I'm interested. Do you think that's, that's one of the reasons that they want this World War III, uh, clash between Russia and the U.S.? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Russia's going to be a threat because Russia's going to be a, uh, an example of the future of what's really possible. And they, of course, don't want that to happen. Plus, he doesn't allow the Jewish gangsters into his country, you see, and that's a real uh, bother to them. <laughs> yeah, it is, because that's how they control most of us, through monetary that's right. means. 
So they're really on it. I mean, the media, are, who are also owned by the Jews, yeah. um, they are very busy trying to belittle Putin and, and to create a war with him. But he's not like, you know, he knows their game. And uh, I think he's a very wise leader. Yeah, he, sa I, he said that, that negotiating with Obama was like playing chess with a pigeon. First of all, he comes on the on the board, knocks all the pieces over, shits all over the board, and then struts around like he's won. I yeah. thought that was I thought that was pretty good. He's a That's he's, very accurate. Yeah. He's a pretty <laughs> he's a pretty clever guy. I saw I, there was a YouTube YouTube video, it said ten things that you don't know about Putin and I think they were meant to uh belittle him, but I thought they were they were all great. I mean he's a child yeah. of of poverty and uh that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a lot to be looking toward Russia for, and uh, the Ringing Cedars books I think are really um, changing the energy of that country and probably the world. Eventually, the whole world will follow suit. You know, the vision for the future Earth that's coming through those books is beautiful, and the more of us that hold the vision, this is very important. The more of us that hold this beautiful vision for the future Earth, the more quickly it will come into form because our power to vision, right, to see through images is part of how we create reality. They've tried to undermine that through the use of alphabet languages so that we talk right. instead of communicate telepathically and send images to each other. Um, and they also try to undermine it by pumping images into our living rooms of war and destruction and poison and nuclear power and all this crap, you know, coming so that they're using our power as we tune into their satanic images. We contribute to the creation of the satanic matrix. So if we pull our attention back, don't look at their images anymore. Don't watch TV. Don't go to their movies. All right. Instead, read the Ringing Cedars books and hold that vision in our minds and our hearts. The more people that do that, do that the more quickly that reality will come into form. I mean, those books have just taken the world by storm. They and really have. They're not in bookstores, you know. They're typically not in bookstores. It's word of mouth. So uh, they're making a huge transformation on this planet. They're very important. That's great. And I noticed on your yeah. website you have a dream about Hawaii that looks like yeah. the ring, Ringing Cedars type model. Do you want right. to talk, talk about that for a minute? Yeah, the vision for Maui um, was inspired by the Ringing Cedars books. For a long time I've wanted to create a sanctuary for people to come who want to prepare for conscious birth. So a way to educate uh, people uh, about conscious conception, how to prepare preconception education, how to prepare for conscious conception, what's going on in the womb, how to create a, a trauma-free womb environment, um, how to how to do a gentle birth, how to have a love-filled birth. You know, I wanted to create this whole area for people to come and live for months and give birth to their babies. In gently and in the water, you know, right. hopefully with dolphins around. Right now I'm kind of pulling back from Hawaii because Hawaii is under attack in a major way from the, the Luciferian forces in America. So we have Monsanto spread out, oh, yeah. you know, poison and everything. We have the military spread out in Hawaii. They're camp trailing like unbelievable. They're just doing everything they can to destroy Hawaii. So I'm not sure that Hawaii is the right place for this, but the vision on my website um, is still in my heart, and I know that there's a place on the earth that will be safe for this, for this to happen. Right. I don't think Hawaii is it right now. How about Russia? Um, it's a little difficult because I don't speak the language in Russia. Right. Uh, but 
I don't know. It might be a little too cold there also for the kind of thing that I'm visualizing. Right. So, but we'll you, see. But you thought about it. Yeah, that's great. I'm really glad yeah. that you have that. Um, yeah, I'm open to I'm open to the universe showing me where the right place on the earth is for this to happen. That's great. Well, I hope that happens. But we need to really get more in depth in your book and exactly Let's what your what your what your what you're teaching us in your book because I know yeah. all the all the interviews I've ever listened to with you I've gone away a gasp because there's always such new information and it's always you know I, I know that you have a real accurate view of what my view of reality is of course it was shaped probably by you a little bit and uh, and but it always opens us up to new possibilities so tell us about more about the book series. Last hour, we were going to really get into depth on on the contents of your book. So, yeah. don't you start us off. All right. Well, um, what I've done with my book is I've taken people's stories of birth trauma and uh, shared some of those stories in the book, including my own story of birth trauma. So the first part of the book is um, filled with intense personal expressions of people that have been through birth rape, people that have been um, involved in circumcision as mm -hmm. nurses, uh, people that have had children in neonatal intensive care units, um, medical kidnapping, all kinds of uh, personal stories of what the medical system is doing to babies and to mothers and also how the fathers are being forced to stand to the side and watch their babies and their partners be abused and violated by these doctors. So it's, it's heart-wrenching. I mean, it's, these are heart-wrenching stories, but we have got to expose what they're doing. And I go, I go into detail about the Luciferian aspect of this. So, for example, with induction. There's something that they're doing today called the induction of labor. And what that is, is they are forcing babies to come out of the womb before the babies are ready to be born. So they're instigating premature birth. And, I want, and they're doing that through very dangerous drugs. Now induction, the word induction, means an initiation into a cult. Jeez. Okay. So military men are inducted into the, into the military. Right. Okay. Policemen are inducted into the police academy. Induction is an initiation for the baby and the mother. Okay. But mostly for the baby. And the baby is being initiated into the Luciferian technological order. Okay. In a normal birth, a baby will decide when it's ready to be born and will signal the mother's body and the mother will begin to produce the neurochemicals of birth. With induction, that dominion that the baby has over the timing of its birth is stolen violently through the use of drugs. And the message to the child's psyche is you are a victim of this order. We have power over you. We will exercise dominion over your life and over your destiny. As you enter into this order, you can expect to receive very little love and to be abused by people in positions of authority. Right. All right. That is the message. And that is exactly 
imprinted into the baby's psyche for life. So the baby will know about the power of the system and the determination this system has. Right. The power over its life. All right. We have some uh, research that indicates babies that are induced uh, have sadomasochistic tendencies uh, as they become adults. And I'm sensing that, number one, birth is a sexual event, and they are being violated through the birth process. They're losing control over their bodies. They've lost control over the birth because these drugs are very violent. You know, they really oh, yeah. hurt the baby. So for, for that person to exercise control over its life and its body, sadomasochism uh, makes some sense. You know, in, if you look at the damage done to this person's psyche from a situation like abduction, it makes sense that they would become sadomasochistic and even, um, you know, we may be setting the stage for psychopathy because one in three births is now induced. Wow. What yeah. about, uh, you, what about the, the birth trauma in general? Now, you know, birth is generally, you, you call it the birth trauma. Does it have to be a trauma? No. No. <laughs> uh, birth, I, I believe birth is designed to be pleasurable and to be filled with love. You know, in, if you look at creation, if you look at how God works, God is all about life, all about the renewal and the generation and bringing forth life. So even if we pave over life, in between the cracks, life comes, you know, little that's flowers. That's what happens. Little, so that's God. God's about life. And there's no benefit to God for the bringing forth of life to be hurtful or painful or problematic or deadly. Okay, that is, the fact that it is painful for most people is an indication that we are taking an erroneous approach, all right, to the birth of our children. Something we are doing is causing the pain, all right? It's not natural. Even though the Judeo-Christian God says women should give birth in pain, that God is not the real creator. That's the same God that tells people to cut off their horse. Right. Okay? That's Lucifer. Everybody's worshiping Lucifer, uh, and they don't even know it. They're so in it. You know, Christians are out there drinking blood and eating body parts it's and amazing. sacrificing man. Come on, people. This is Satanism. Right. So what I want to stress is that birth is designed to be pleasurable because it is... The, the fulfillment of human love. It should be two people that love each other but come together to create a life and bring their love into eternity through this life. It should be expelled. It should be, you know, brilliant, huge love. Just tremendous. And there are many women that are experiencing it that way. And then their babies experience that it that way and their partners do too. But it doesn't happen in a hospital. No. Okay. Maybe. Just the opposite is going to happen in a hospital. As soon as a woman goes into the hospital, very often her labor will stop because her body locks up in fear. Her body's like danger. This environment is not safe. It's not cool to give birth here. I'm going to stop her. Wow. <laughs> you know. So, so um, because we're walking into this alien environment, it becomes very difficult to give birth. And then they give drugs, you know, like uh, Pitocin. Pitocin is uh, artificial oxytocin. And it causes really intense contractions, like like a steamroller. One oh. after another, another after another. So the baby's being crushed. You know, instead of the contractions trying to help the baby, it's actually smashing the baby Jeez. over and over again. And the mother's screaming like, oh my God, I can't take the pain. Give me my epidural, you know, give me my pain relief. None of this is normal. That, that pain is because of the drug, right? In a, in a natural birth, a contraction will, um, it'll come, it'll peak for like 20 seconds, and then it'll ease off. The body rests, contraction comes, builds, peaks, eases off, and the body rests. All right, with Pitocin, 
Um, so of course there's pain. The drugs are making the pain. Not the birth process. The normal birth process is not painful. Contractions, you know, I heard one mother who had an ecstatic birth say she had expansions. Oh wow, that's cool. Instead of Not contractions. Contract. That's that's even beautiful. The, even the language is designed to create constriction in right. our thinking and in our bodies. Right? These are not contractions. These are designed to open the body so that the baby can come through. All right? They really all are expansions. The you know, whole wow. body, the woman's body is expanding and opening. And this is like a, an interdimensional opening that is possible. Absolutely. For communication between source and the earth right through the mother. Okay, this is a very powerful moment in a mother's life, uh, a very spiritually potent experience designed to be pleasurable, designed to Amazing. open the gateways for love, all right, not, not for pain. If the pain is present, something is wrong with what we're doing. Right. Okay. So we're on this earth, maybe working to expand our consciousness. We're working into expansion. The first thing that we go through is a contraction. Is that how? Or an expansion. It could be an expansion, depending on who, right. Depending on who's your mother. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Depends on your mother. Well, that's, it's amazing that, uh, and it is a pathway. It absolutely of is. Of course it is. It absolutely is. And women have talked about it as being an interdimensional experience. Even in the Ringing Cedars books, she talks about the soul, the baby's soul tripping through the stars, you know, as it makes its way to the parents, you know, and that the parents actually leave their bodies during conception, literally, to go to this other dimension to, to get their baby and bring their baby back into this dimension, right? This is extremely spiritual, like the most sacred and profound uh, moments of our lives is when we're creating life and bringing life in. I mean, nothing could be more important than what happens during this time. And of course, the dark forces know this, which is why they want to get their hands into them. This is why they want to manipulate how we conceive our babies and gestate our babies and birth our babies. Well, you how know? many babies were created through pornography? Well, yeah. Many, 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 because many... <clears throat> See, this is very important because when men are having sex with a woman, whatever they're thinking about goes into their sperm. So if they're having pornographic thoughts, as they're having intercourse with their wife, they've got some other woman in their mind, right, some pornographic image, then that is in their sperm. You know, if a child gets created, that information is imprinted into the child. And the child is then going to have a whole pornographic mindset. It's not going to have an imprint of deep love between the parents, because that's not what was going on. The father's visualizing pornography. Maybe the mother is too. Yeah, who knows? We don't know, because pornography is such a, a Luciferian tool, okay, to get us to conceive babies as a side effect of fleshy indulgence. Now, we don't even want babies. We're just going, having sex so that we can have a physical experience. But this is life-creating potential we're dealing with. And life comes in, whether or not we consciously choose it. So are we choosing to trade a few minutes of physical gratification in exchange for authentic, enduring, human love and healthy children, right, is having sex, having sex, just disgusting what we're doing. Is it really that important when you're going to have sex, get pregnant and go kill your baby through abortion? Or gestate your baby in a womb where you don't want your baby? And then birth your baby in violence and have your baby be born into a 
situation where you don't love the man you made a baby with? Not okay. All of this, all of this is manipulation. We have been so mentally uh, become deranged as a right. result of the Luciferian influences on this planet. And we think it's okay. We, we say, oh, I'm going to have an abortion. Well, that's the, the second tra the second tenet of Satanism, according to Mark Passio, who you who you know, he says that the second tenet of Satanism is uh, moral relativity, situational yep. ethics, and so yep. you so you don't know right from wrong when you're creating a baby, when you're growing up, when you're when you're becoming sexual, you know there's no. There's no moral roadmap, and if there is, you're encouraged by your peer group and other people to ignore it. So you can get into a situation where you're creating a child through depri deprived thoughts, depraved thoughts. I mean, it's exactly. If you if you think about um, this is all in my book, by the way. I'm talking about abortion. I'm talking about all of these things. And the you name, think about what's going the on name in of the, the book system. is is birth trauma and the dark side of the medical dark side of modern medicine. The dark side of modern medicine, and it's available through her website, probably also through. Uh, is it on Amazon, Janice? It's on Amazon. It's on Kindle. Um, you can get it through my website at birthofanewearth.com. If you order it through me, it helps me a little bit because I get more money that way. Than can we get a Kindle? Way. Can we get a Kindle through you? Yeah, no, you have to order Kindle on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, what I want to say is about about the um, where were we about the abortion? Yeah. In the ring, Cedar's books. She talks about uh, sex for its own sake as being very harmful. And um, the difference in the experience when two people bring their bodies together because they want to bring in a light, the experience that happens is so physiologically different um, that if we ever did it that way, once we conceived the baby, consciously and had that experience, we would never want to have sex again because the merging of two physical bodies at the physical level only, okay, is about one million of what we should be experiencing when we bring our bodies together. It is such a stunted, incomplete uh, nothing. Right? So you have an orgasm. Right. You, you spill your guts, right? So what? It's so fleeting and so incomplete that most of us come up empty, right? We feel like something's not right with our partner, you know, we're doing something wrong. Uh, the truth is we can never achieve full satisfaction just but for having sex for its own sake. The only way to experience what the Creator intended for us to experience through union is through the desire to bring forth life. And most of us now, we're 50, 60, 70, right? We missed it. We never conceived babies consciously. All we did was have sex, because that was our conditioning. And they're teaching children in the schools, five-year-olds. Five -year Here's masturbation. Right. Right. Here's what homosexuality is. Teaching ten-year-olds about anal sex and fisting. Okay, fisting. This is what homosexuals do. They put their whole fist in somebody's yeah. anus, and they're teaching ten-year-olds that this is a form of intimacy in schools. Right there, they are. Here's the condoms. Here's the condoms. Right. Have sex. Have sex. Have sex. Right. As long as it's safe sex. We don't want you to get a disease, but we do want you to have sex. Because having sex is sure to destroy your life. Because you're bound to have a kid who's going to suffer as a result of you having sex with so little consciousness and so little regard 
for what you're doing. It's, it's amazing. It's probably the most important thing that a child should be taught. And there's no way that I know of any parent that's going to teach a child what I just said, because the parents themselves do not know, number one, even those who've read the Ringing Cedars books skip right over this. Right. How she couldn't possibly be mean that sex for its own sake is bad. It's so wonderful. We're, we're making love. She even says... What people do in bed today, calling it lovemaking, is a mockery of love and a debasement of God. And it can't compare with the millionth part of what the Creator has in store for us when we get a grip on what we're doing. Right. But, so but, the parents, the parents are the problem too. They're not. They're not stepping up and owning the information I'm sharing with you, probably because it's never occurred to them. It never occurred to me, Janice. I, I'm, I'm. I know. You're blowing my mind with this stuff. I know. I heard you uh, talk talk about this before on Freeman with Freeman, and yeah. uh, I was really interested, and I really needed more clarification. So I'm glad we got into this a little bit. Um, but it really needs it needs a cultural shift, and perhaps this book. And I'm sure you're going to continue to do lectures and talks and whatever you can do to promote this. I certainly am. There's more books coming, for sure, uh, besides this one. This was like an introduction into the dark side. And I also go a little bit into prenatal trauma. So through my own story, through telling my story of the suffering I went through in the womb, I'm letting people know that this is important. Okay, What happens to a baby in the womb matters. It affects the rest of their life. So if we can... Um, create babies uh, willfully, not right. haphazardly because we want to. We can help our children so much just by that one thing, by wanting them. And if we can take it even one level more and say, not only do I want to make a child with this beautiful person who is my partner, but I want to call in a child, we want to call in a child that will contribute to the fulfillment of love on this planet and to help the divine dream flourish. Right. And we're calling a very special kind of being right, to come to us. And this is helping God tremendously by our, will, by our willingness to align with God and to say, I want to help bring love to the planet. I want to help fulfill your program of purity and goodness right. on this part. I no longer want to contribute to the Luciferian agenda and give birth to children who are suffering, sick, and traumatized. I don't want to be part of them anymore. I want to be part of your agenda, God. I want to be part of love. Right. I this can... is a blessing for us and them. Right. For us as uh, elders, I think doing what you're doing, getting the word out, straightening, it's like straightening the human race out. Okay, here's where you've been doing, and here's where they want to take you. But here's how you can stay out of it. I could see the millennium generation, if they could be exposed to your material, really, even though, you know, we're, even in that generation, very corrupted. I mean, they were born oh, in this big time. Big time. And, uh, but, but they might be able to uh, with a partner, get themselves to the point where they were actually, you know. I have actually created a curriculum, a 20-week curriculum, to take to take young people. It's, it's devoted to young adults, but to take them from A to Z in terms of all this information I'm sharing with you today. Uh, that's really part of my heart's calling, and especially some, for some reason I'm drawn to work with, with the young men. Uh, but the curriculum is there, the men's program is there. Uh, I had tried to get my curriculum into the schools in Hawaii. Uh, none of them were willing to integrate it right. into their schools. So there's going to need to be a building up of an alternative uh, school, or alternative uh, center of some kind where this information can be disseminated and I think it's very important that people uh, come together through a crowdfunding or something like that. I need to create right. that 
so people can make contributions to the creation of this center, an educational center, and from which, once we have the educational center in place, we can then create the sanctuary so people can come not just for the education, but also to stay, give birth to their children, That's you know, great. in some, some magnificent place on the earth. In one generation, we could change things, literally. If we um, help young people understand this important material, yeah, it's, help it's, them create life. It's critical, and you mentioned education. Uh, for me, one of the biggest traumas in my life, probably after circumcision, was education. Getting up at an ungodly hour, uh, sometimes before the crack of dawn. I was four and a half when I started. I don't know how, how old they normally are. But uh, you go and you're, you're belittled and you're, uh, you're annoyed and you're disciplined. And, and, this, and then you come home to your mother again. I mean, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was certainly uh, trauma-based mind control for me. Maybe it's because I'm so sensitive, but... Um, no, it is what it is. I mean, I've heard people, I um, can't remember the name right now, one of the Rockefellers was talking to somebody saying how they created the uh, Women's Liberation Movement because they wanted to get women out of the home so they could get their hands on the kids and begin the programming very early. Right. All right, so everything has been orchestrated to control us and to, you know, especially the children are being, um, like you said, traumatized severely by being, you know, taken away from their mothers and uh, right. put in these institutions of horror, you know, uh, where there's no real education going on. It's all mind control. Right. Even the ancient Greeks, the children used to stay with the mother, I think, until they were seven years old. They weren't even, I mean, they were with the mother. I mean, women in indigenous cultures are still nursing their children to die. You know, they, they let them nurse for years, for many, many years. Um, something else that's coming in that I think we really need to talk about is the is the umbilical cord cutting. I don't know why, but, but it's coming that we must talk about this today. Good. Um, part of what I, what I want to say is that because we've been so initiated, right, and our mothers have too for the birth process, then it seems normal to our mothers to give us over to these entities. And because we've had our blood stolen and our placenta stolen by these forces, it means these forces can really severely negatively influence us throughout life. So the theft of, I mean, the theft of our souls starts at birth. And the fact that it continues through school is just a normal flow right. of the theft of the soul. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. There's a, there's a building on on the original attempted theft of the soul. Well, the, first and, of all, um, it, it's about fear. I was afraid to go to school. I mean, it was a fearful thing for me. So that's how it started. You're four and a half, for goodness sakes. What are they doing? What are they doing putting you in a strange environment with strange people and handing us over to people they don't know to raise us? Seems crazy. What? It's insane. Right. It is insane. Everything that this culture is doing is insane. <laughs> it's, it's a, when you look at it, it certainly is. So let me, let, me, let me spin back to the birth process here because I want people to understand about the umbilical cord, clamping and cutting. Um, there's a series of things that are happening to babies, all right, with induction, amniotomy, um, the fetal heart monitors screwed into their heads so that they're getting blasted with ultrasound frequencies all through the birth. There's epidural that separates them from their mothers and leaves them to get birth on their own. There's C-sections. Um, and there's cord clamping. All right, what the doctors are doing, when the baby comes out, the baby is still attached to the umbilical cord, 
and to the placenta. The placenta is still in the mother's body. Mm -hmm. And there's a tremendous amount of blood coming through that umbilical cord to the baby. So they cut, they cut the cord, okay? They steal that blood. That's one third of the baby's blood supply, literally. So the baby is born in a hemorrhage state. And do you know what they're doing with that blood? Oh, I heard you say this before, but go ahead. All right. Dr. McCola, you know who he is? Yeah, McCola. Came out, came out with an article like two days ago on the benefits of, of young blood for the aging people who are sick. So he's talking about drinking blood. He's talking about transfusions of young blood. And several different articles have come out over the last six months about the benefits of taking young blood to help the elderly Satanists, right, so that they can live longer. This is really what's going on. We know that the Luciferians are involved in drinking blood right. and eating body parts. Eating flesh. Right? They do this as a way to steal the soul, to steal the life force, and harness it for themselves. <clears throat> and they think that this will make them more useful and help them live long. So it's being mainstream, the drinking of blood and the using of, of young blood to help the older people. So we know that there, there's no benefit, zero, to stealing an infant's cord blood. That baby needs its blood when it's born. That blood contains oxygen to help the baby breathe, to help his lungs develop properly. It contains stem cells to help have a healthy immune system, right? All kinds of things are in that blood, and that blood belongs in the baby's body at birth. But they're taking it. They're stealing it, and they're selling it, and they're selling it to the highest bidder. There was a website called infants-blood.info wow. that was boldly selling infant blood on the Internet. And I have, um, they took this site down. I mean, if you go to that website, infants-blood.info, now it's a totally different front page. Okay, but I had screenshots. I took screenshots of that website and put it up on my blog so people can see. Great. They have, they have a baby um, with a tr transfusions coming through his heart, right? The blood's going out of him. They have people spreading congealed blood on their toes. They have people bathing in the infant blood and looking much more youthful. They have people, I mean, it is so sick. And people say, oh, that must be a joke. I'm telling you, it's not a joke. These people are really doing this. And they're stealing your baby's life for us. And then another article came out where the, where the woman was talking about um, receiving a facial made up of infant placentas. Oh. And how, how she felt so good after this facial with infant, infant placentas all over her face and she couldn't get enough. All right, it's the same thing with foreskins. Women are putting foreskins on their face in cosmetic. All right, Oprah sells some of these cosmetics that contain foreskins. So the whole culture has become satanic. Absolutely. Right? Satanism is being mainstream. We have aborted human fetuses in our food. Absolutely. I was reading that this morning. Pepsi, Nestle's, all the big manufacturers. You know, Mike Adams pisses me off because all of that information has been on my blog for at least a year and a half. And over and over, he, he steals people's material and makes it like it's his own. You know, that information is all on my blog, but he never mentioned my blog in his, uh, in his article. So this is one issue I have. I'm not the only person that Mike Adams does this to. Um, and he's not the only one that does it. They steal information from those of us that are on the front lines, right, talking about the evil. And then they don't give credit where credit is due. But it's in my book about, about the, um, the aborted human babies being used in food, 
about them uh, being used in cosmetics, about them being burned to create electricity in a hospital in Oregon. Oh, yes, I heard that too. All right, they're, they're being uh, turned into powder uh, to create stamina boosting pills. This is all happening to aborted, to aborted babies. And the most disgusting thing of all is that the Israelis are taking eggs from aborted human girls and using those eggs to create IVF children. What, IVF children? What's that? You know, an, I, an IVF child is when um, they take an egg and a sperm and they fertilize the egg and the sperm and they implant that fertilized egg in a woman's body who can't have a baby. That's IVF. So some of them, some of the eggs are coming from aborted babies. And in fact, they're taking sperm from dead men as well, creating IVF babies. So they're creating babies from corpses. This is totally satanic. Totally. Totally a Luciferian. Uh, totally goes against every aspect of natural law. And especially because we know that the sperm and the egg have memory. All right. So that egg from an aborted baby will have memory of being aborted. And that will become a person. Right? And that person won't have a conscious understanding of why something is so wrong in its life. It doesn't have an understanding that it was made from a corpse. All right. And that corpse was murdered by the medical system at the request of its own mother. That baby was murdered at the request of its own mother and then, and then brought to life through its eggs in the form of another baby. I mean, it's just all charts, evil, evil to the core. Every aspect of artificial reproductive technologies is Luciferian. All right, this is the key thing that the Luciferians can't do. All right, they cannot create light the way the Creator creates light. When the Creator creates life, everything regenerates itself. All of life right. is a continuum, okay? But when they create life, no such thing happens. All right? Even when any, any building that they build goes into deterioration, we must have constant attention to Absolutely. stay up. Everything they create dies. Everything. Even their IVF babies can't reproduce. All right, because yeah. they are de we are dealing with Lucifer's attempt to understand God's creation of life, and he will never hold the secrets to the way God does it, because God does it through love. Well, they're making and us they they're making us into a product, or a product, like they made the animals into a product. Exactly. Um, so exactly. doing the same thing to humans. Doing the same thing to babies, you know, to even this. There's information about um, artificial reproductive technologies in my book. All right, I've really exposed a lot, a lot of the darkest stuff that I'm aware of, so that people can get a handle on it. Um, I am also a victim of uh, artificial reproductive technologies because my husband years ago had a low sperm count. So I went and I um, allowed them to uh, take his sperm, what do they call it, artificial insemination. Right. They took my husband's sperm, spun it through a centrifuge, injected it into my body, and I got pregnant. And they gave me drugs that made me very sick at the time for hypoagulation. But of course the drugs and the combination of what they're doing um, creates deformed babies. So I had a deformed baby. At least that's what they told me. And I chose to abort my baby. Because At they told time. you it was deformed. It, so they told me my baby was deformed. And that he would never survive outside of my womb. And it was only years later that I, I, I realized how they killed my baby. And what they do is they inject a a very toxic solution into the amniotic sac and the baby gulps it in 
and uh, his little lungs get burned. He's burnt on the inside, and then the outer layer of his skin is burnt. And so my baby was burnt to death in my womb. From the inside. And I gave birth. I gave birth to my baby who was burnt to death in my womb. This was at five months. Uh, by the time I found out uh, that they told me that my baby was born, but really. 70, 70 plus percent of what they do is not successful. And then even the success stories, those of us who get pregnant, end up with situations like mommy, okay, where the baby is deformed, defective, has all kinds of illnesses in a neonatal intensive care unit, can't reproduce when they come of age, they suffer because of the way that they're created. Because the whole thing is, there's no love there. There's no love in artificial reproductive technology. It's devoid of love. Okay, no being is going to have a good life if the start of that being's life is without love. We have to understand this. Right. So, so when people find themselves unable to have a baby, probably the best thing to do would be to get back and get right with themselves, with each other and try to get into a place of love, into a creative kind of place, rather than, oh, I want to have a baby, so let's go through the medical procedure. Right, right. Because normally if you're infertile, it's, there's a couple of things that you're doing. Maybe you're getting vaccinated, maybe you're eating genetically modified foods, maybe you have trauma. Maybe you have trauma from your own prenatal life or your own birth. And your body is resisting going through that until right. you heal your trauma. Okay, there's a lot of things that are driving infertility. And if we cleaned ourselves up, we would become fertile again. Well, with all the trauma that a woman has to go through uh, to get to be a young woman, you know, it's a wonder that we can reproduce it all with all this. Well, um, I think there's going to be less and less because even the ultrasound that they're blasting at babies in the womb is going to cause infertility later in life. Do you know they're using ultrasound as the con a form of contraception? So if you take the adult male scrotum right. and you blast that scrotum with two 15-minute blasts of ultrasound, that man will be infertile for a minimum of six months and wow. it can be permanent. So if, you're, if you take those ultrasound frequencies and direct them at the baby's developing ovaries and testes, what do we think is going to happen in them? Right. Well, and sometimes they... Go ahead, won't you tell... seems to me I heard you tell, tell a story before about uh, the ultrasound process and how painful it is for the baby to have that done to them. Yeah. Ultrasound is um, something that we can't hear as adults, but that babies can hear very loudly. So to them, it's kind of like they're in the subway station, oh. and the trains are, are rolling through, right. you know. I was listening to a, um, a two-and-a-half-year-old being interviewed about her birth, and she said, and this is because the fetal heart monitor is also ultrasound, so all through the labor, these babies are being blasted with these sound frequencies. And some of them have the heart monitor screwed into their skull, so it's going directly into their brain, right? These blasts. The baby was saying, it was very, very loud thunder. And I kept hearing the thunder, and I was afraid. I was trying to get away from the thunder, but I couldn't get away from the thunder. The thunder kept coming and coming. And then I was born, and then the thunder stopped. So they had trauma. She was afraid of the thunder in the womb. Well, and during you. her birth process. And during birth. Because all during labor, they've got these stupid fetal heart monitors attached to the mother, blasting those frequencies at the baby. So she's hearing it in the womb. She's hearing it while she's trying to get born. Why, why would they put a heart monitor on a, ba on a pregnant mother? Because they know that the tocin, the drug I spoke to you later, that causes that those intense contractions, that that's going to cause fetal distress. 
so that they're looking for the fetal distress, you see, so they can move to a C-section. Once they have put the baby in distress, then they can move the mother toward to a C-section very quickly. Do they get more Some money? The, they get more huh? money? Do they get more money for the C-section? Section? Yeah, in the U.S. it's thirty thousand dollars if you give birth naturally, and fifty thousand if you give birth with a uh, with C -section. a C-section. So it's a profit it's motive. Just, it's not just about money. It's because they want to inflict maximum damage on the mother and the baby. You see, they want to break the family down. They want to stop the bonds of love. So. The toxin, of course, prevents the mother's body from producing natural oxytocin. And oxytocin is necessary for that mother to bond with her baby and breastfeed her baby, but she's not going to have any <laughs> because they injected her with artificial oxytocin. You see? So the natural stuff isn't going to be there. And then if the baby's born by C-section, all the neurochemicals of love that are normally produced at birth will not be present. So the mother is going to be in immense pain from the surgery and not able to bond with her baby because of the lack of love hormones at birth. Everything they do, even putting a hat on the baby's head, prevents the mother and the father from sensing the pheromones on the, off the, coming off the baby's head, and from smelling the baby's head. And these are ways to activate the parent's brain to produce the neurochemicals of love. See, so they put that hat on, and then they put they put gunk in the baby's eyes to prevent eye contact. Right? Because eye contact is another primary means that activates the brain to, to flood the system with the neurochemicals of love. Right? So they block that. And they swaddle the baby in a blanket so that there's no skin to skin, because skin to skin is another thing that activates the brain to release the chemicals of love. So everything that they do is designed to interfere with human love. Everything. And create trauma. From point A to point Z. All right, if oxytocin is not in the mother's body during birth, her baby's oxytocin receptor sites are damaged for life. Wow. And I don't want to say that this can't be healed. But we have to be aware of it and seek healing from birth trauma therapists in order to recover these lost aspects of ourselves that were stolen from us at birth. And if you are like me, one of the many people out there who can't build a relationship with your parents that's based in love, the origins are from the very beginning. What happened at conception, in gestation, and at birth. Right? This is the core of our pain, and this is the core of what we need to heal and transform. We have got to change what we are doing. Exactly, and it's got to start from the beginning. It's got to start from the creation of life through the pregnancy with a proper birth and bonding with the parents. Oh, that's amazing stuff. That's amazing stuff. In fact, in, fact, in the Ringing Cedars books, she talks about parents. If they create a space of love, right, their own parcel of land where they grow their food for the family, all right, if they gestate and birth, gestate, uh, conceive, gestate, and birth their baby in their space of love, then that baby can be born into this dimension with all of their pristine capacities intact, all right. The creation of a space on the earth for your children, conscious conception, trauma-free gestation, gentle birth, all right, these, and of course, conscious parenting. These are the keys to the transformation of what's happening on our planet. Right, to get us back in line with how we should be. You know, it seems to me that like, uh, I don't know, probably in the 1850s, most people hadn't come into the city for the Industrial Revolution, and they probably were having their babies back on the farm and eating uh, locally grown things. So, yep. so a lot of this is Industrial Revolution, and of course, the creation of allopathic medicine, which is it's statistically a plague on mankind. 
you know, we call it the Industrial Revolution, but it's really the Luciferian Revolution. Right. The whole technological world is Luciferian, including technological growth. Every aspect of this uh, technological culture is a Luciferian construct. So returning to our origins, you know how the Hawaiians lived? Um, they built houses made out of, uh, you know, uh, bamboo and hollow leaves. From, they had uh, structures made from the natural environment, nothing artificial. And they did just fine, plenty of food everywhere. They didn't have to right. farm, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> they just didn't. It's, uh, and we wouldn't either. If we would stop paving over everything and putting up our stupid lawn, you know, all this useless garbage that does no good for anything. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, you, you mentioned a couple things as we were going by, and I wanted to make sure that I got a concept. You talked about birth rape. Is that is that just another name for um, this type of birth where it's induced? And you... Birth rape um, is, I mean, there are stories from the stories where women are literally, um, like one story where, the doctors pulled out the mother's whole uterus. They were pulling to get the placenta out instead of letting the placenta get born. And this woman doctor ripped out her whole uterus. Oh. Um, so, Jeez. and then the you know the doctors gathered around to put the uterus back in, and they acted like that they were heroes, like they saved this woman's life. So, there are tools that are wielded during birth. You know, like a pinziotomy is right. birth rate. Circumcision is birth rate. Absolutely. Right? There, there is sexual violence happening where the woman is sitting in a room with her legs up in the air and her, her vagina for all the world to see. And you have medical students coming in, one after the other, sticking their hands in her vagina so that they learn how to see how dilated her cervix is. This is birth rate. Nobody should be putting their hands in a woman's vagina, and for a father to be sitting by watching people do this to his wife, I mean, it's just too much, you know? So there are various aspects of birth rape, but the fact that women are saying that they felt raped is why we call it birth rape. Good. Okay? Yeah. And you've got instances, uh, incidences and stories about that from, from the people that you were interviewing and you know, I have worse stories even than that because some women are little, literally raped. They're put on drugs under anesthetic, and the doctors have intercourse with them wow. while they're anesthetized. And I also have in my book several stories of doctors being arrested for this very thing. So they literally women are being raped. Women who are anesthetized are having doctors... Uh, medical students do pelvic exams on them without their consent. Oh. They never consented to being used as mannequins while they were anesthetized. But this is really what's happening. If you end up in a teaching hospital, you're in danger of being raped through pelvic exams. It's much worse. I mean, it's just, you, you would not believe. I've heard stories from a father after his baby was born, the doctor stuck his finger in the baby's vagina and said, we just want to make sure everything's okay in there. The father no. watched his baby get raped. But when you're standing by and the doctor's doing it, you know, that, that's a, like a, it's like an authority figure. It's a strange exactly. authority figure. Yeah. But the shame and the guilt that fathers are feeling is very, very deep, you know, and the rage that the mothers are feeling, that the fathers weren't able to protect them, you know, they don't trust their partners after that, and marriages break down because of this. It's because of this system that this is happening to families, that families are breaking down. We have to see it for what it is, you know, it's destroying people. It's, it's hard to see it for what it is because you have to really step back from it. It's, I mean, everything seems normal. Um, Not. Not. I was at a doctor's office 
Well, I had to go to the doctor in February. And, of course, he prescribes. They always prescribe statins for me. Well, I know how to use the Internet, so I know I know not to use statins. Um, but it's just they expect you to, and everybody else expects you to, take the doctor's advice. I mean, because I'm not doing what the doctor said, everybody thinks I'm a little crazy. Well, you're not crazy. Thanks. Who, who was it that said, um, being well-adjusted, it is no measure of mental health ah. to be well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society. Right. It was Chris Navarthy. Okay. Yeah, it was Chris it's Navarthy. a good one. Yeah. Hey, listen, I've been, uh, since I've been involved in this Hampstead case and really getting into that and, and that whole horrible mess, uh, I've noticed the obsession of the Satanists, the Luciferians, uh, with anal sex and with the anus in general um, to sort of lock the, lock the child's being, his consciousness, down into the lower chakras. Is that, is that what you're coming up with too? Well, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of it quite that way. I think the obsession with anal sex is um, just to make the act of creation turn into shit. Ah. Understand? So just make it into filth and um, waste and, I mean, just the total degradation of the, of the life creating force. It's it horrible. Is the most, it is the most disgusting thing uh, that I could have conceived of, frankly, and they, they normalize it. And of course, they are trying to steal the life force of these children, to steal their purity. Um, there's some great books by Kurt Borker, K-E-R-T-H, B-A-R-K-E-R. -E you can find them through my blog, which is birthofanewart.blogspot.com. Um, but he's written extensively about, uh, he's a victim of satanic ritual abuse, and the amount of sexual abuse that he was... Um, subjected to, he believes was for the purpose of turning him into a psychopath and to make him more more agreeable to becoming a Satanist, you know, as he became older. Well, they, you know, so, they, go ahead. His books are very important for people that want to understand how the Satanists think. Well, I think we all really need to understand that. I think that's that's a critical learning thing now. I was listening to, um, actually it was either today or yesterday, the, the parents of the uh, Hampstead children, the mother, his name is Ella, and, the, and the, uh, her partner's name is Abraham. And they were talking about, you know, these children that had been satanic me, satanically molested, they, uh, when they were left alone, they would start fondling one another. And when they fondle one another, they would they would become bad. They would do mischievous things, like they they took his toothbrush and they put it in the toilet and made sure that the you know they wiped the toilet with it and then they put it back. And they would do that. Ah. Well, and then and then he he kept telling them not to do that, and then he got in a little trouble for for enforcing it, but. Uh, it was interesting how they thought they would, these children would trigger their satanic possession by fondling one another sex. By, by sex. Yeah. Yeah, because when you when you take sex out of the context of love and the creation of life, we are opening to these satanic influences. That's why we become willing to murder our children. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. not normal. That something has happened um, to possess us, to make us willing to do that. So I myself had an interesting experience, and then I really have to—I have to end the. Um, okay, the call, great, sure. Um, where I was participating years ago, before I knew anything about what I'm sharing with you, I was participating in an erotic dance ritual with six or seven other women, and all of them but one shape shifted into a reptilian entity. 
every mm. single one of them except one. I saw green eyes, red eyes, I saw garboyle bodies, I mean, all kinds of weird, and I had no uh, context in which to understand what I was seeing. Okay, and only years later do I now understand that something happened through us opening that portal for the misuse of sexual right. energy, okay, that allowed these entities to come in, literally, to possess the majority of the women in that room. And here we thought we were like empowering ourselves, right. claiming the divine feminine, right? All this bullshit. <laughs> so, so even. Even uh, using pornography could be opening yourself up. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Amazing. No doubt about that. This was an amazing time with you. You always blow our mind. Uh, every time I hear you, and then being face to face with you was a, a real thrill. <laughs> I want to make sure that everybody knows your website and the name of your book. And I know we're going to get a Kindle version. I'm sorry, that's all we can get down there. But that's uh, great. My, my website is birthofanewearth.com. My blog is birthofanewearth.blogspot.com. I have a YouTube channel, Birth of a New Earth, and I have a book called Birth Trauma and the Dark Side of Modern Medicine. You can find it on my website at birthofanewearth.com, or you can go to Amazon. You get the Kindle or the paperback, whichever um, you prefer. That's right. That's so really... Thank you, Paul. This was a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank for you. For your heart. What a beautiful heart energy you are. I'm delighted to talk with you. Thank you. It was lovely talking to you, too. And I hope everybody gets your book because we all need to know this aspect of the Luciferian whatever you could call it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, God bless you, my God brother. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah.